Thank you for joining us for this Contagion Peer Exchange entitled Battling Against Resistant Pseudomonas Infections in the ICU. Multidrug resistant strains of Pseudomonas are increasingly found in hospital intensive care units, putting patients who are already very sick at risk for developing hard to treat infections. Timely diagnostics and effective empiric strategies are essential to the successful treatment of these infections. This peer exchange, panel of experts in infectious disease, will discuss current diagnostic and treatment strategies and best practices for antibiotic selection for resistant pseudomonas. I'm Dr. Peter Salgo. I'm a professor of medicine and anesthesiology at Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons. I'm associate director of surgical intensive care at New York Presbyterian Hospital. Joining me for this panel discussion are Dr. Yoav Golan, an attending physician at Tufts Medical Center in Boston, Massachusetts. Dr. Marin H. Koloff, Professor of Medicine and Virginia E. Sam J. Goldman Chair in Respiratory Intensive Care Medicine at Washington University School of Medicine and Director of both Clinical Care Research and Respiratory Care Services at Barnes Jewish Hospital of St. Louis, Missouri. Dr. Jason Pogue, an Infectious Diseases Clinical Pharmacist at Sinai Grace Hospital of Detroit Medical Center and Clinical Assistant Professor of Medicine at Wayne State University School of Medicine in Detroit, Michigan. And Dr. Andy Shore, Section Head, Pulmonary and Critical Care Medicine, MedStar, Washington Hospital Center, and Professor of Medicine at Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. I want to thank all of you for being here. Got a lot to cover, so let's begin. So the obvious question is, who are the patients in the ICU who are most susceptible to Pseudomonas aeruginosa infections? We can just call this Pseudomonas, right? We don't have to give it the full name. Where do we start on this? Well, Peter, uh, the sickest patients are usually the ones who get pseudomonas infection. Uh, in the intensive care unit, uh, there are certain categories of patients who seem to be at higher risk. Uh, certainly, patients who are immune suppressed fall into one of those categories. Uh, in our institution, we happen to have separate ICUs, including an ICU for patients who have bone marrow transplants and certain malignancies. And we certainly see a lot of pseudomonas within that population. There are other critically ill patients where we tend to see pseudomonas quite a bit as well. Uh, we run a very large lung transplant program. We have a large cystic fibrosis program. Right. Patients who have structural lung disease in particular seem to be at very high risk for developing pseudomonal infections. And obviously other patients who have certain uh, disruptions of skin, burn patients, et cetera, fall into that category as well. But one thing that is important to keep in mind is that many of these patients have one common factor in place, and that's having received prior antibiotics. And so these critically ill patients are often getting antibiotics, and for that reason, it can predispose them to infections, particularly with resistant bacteria like Pseudomonas. Right. I was always taught that it isn't the Pseudomonas necessarily, but that Pseudomonas is actually a marker for really serious disease. The Pseudomonas per se is not all that virulent. Is that fair? I mean, is it Pseudomonas that's causing the illness, or is it the illness that's leading to Pseudomonas? So, I, I mean, I, I would say that Pseudomonas is a virulent organism. How so? But at this, I mean, if you look at just its virulence factors, but you're absolutely right to add in the fact that it hits our most vulnerable patients. It has the highest likelihood of having drug resistance, so we're most likely to get it wrong up front. And then sometimes we're forced with suboptimal therapies on the back end as well. So it all kind of plays hand in hand, but it certainly has its virulence factors well, as well. Well, certainly it does, but is it... I guess what I'm saying is, it's as, as you point out, s the sick people, the weak, the yep. immunocompromised, the previously treated, the ones who can least afford to get a virulent infection, they're the pseudomonas. But, but in many cases, as, as Jason says, as getting pseudomonas and getting infected with pseudomonas would be the turning point. You mentioned cystic fibrosis. Right. Many patients actually do well until they get colonized with pseudomonas, and once they do and start to get infected. <laughs> so you're right, you need a predisposing factor sometimes, but then pseudomonas may be the factor that would actually uh, result in the worst. And the other point I think is important is we're, we're using a paradigm right now in this part of the conversation where we're presuming the pseudomonas is an ICU-acquired phenomenon. The vast majority of my ugly pseudomonas is brought to me from the floor where antibiotic therapy has been misused. <clears throat> you know, 20 days of Pepercil and Tazobactam because the patient had an ingrown toenail. Or is brought- Oh, you don't do that? At, uh, that's not no, a good idea? No, probably it's not. 19 days, right? That's, that's 19 the right days. Durations. Well, actually, at our place, it's in the jello in the tray <laughs> for the patients. <laughs> but we were told never to stop the antibiotic too soon. Yeah, well, we, we, that, there's a whole host of evidence now, and we're going to drag pseudomonal therapy into the evidence-based literature uh, paradigm at some point. But the other point is, I see plenty of patients with you know, classically healthcare-associated syndromes 
Right. They come from nursing homes where they've probably been in the hospital recently, they've probably seen prior antibiotics, and they bring their multidrug resistant pseudomonas with them to the hospital. So I think it's important to realize that although there's plenty of ICU acquired pseudomonas, there's plenty of de novo pseudomonas infection that's brought to the ICU and that you have to be vigilant for it, not only as an ICU acquired pathogen, but as just a pathogen sure. in sick patients. Now, I heard some